Alright guys, Hatch Crown back again today. I hope you're doing well and enjoying your day so far. Predator's given a very strong hint towards Optic Texas being his primary number one goal destination for this current offseason, saying there's no issues with the relationship there. That is still the organization that he and all the other players would want to play for, and also giving his dream team as three of the four Optic Dynasty members. Very much intrigued to your thoughts in the comments below. Hit the like button if you enjoy. Subscribe if you're new as always, I'd greatly appreciate it. First of all, thought this is hilarious, right? Coming out of the face camp last night to a slash is there's gonna take a mid scrim piss and I hear help I'm stuck from one of the bathrooms I'm stuck step bro next thing I know scrims are chalked and operation break MC out of the bathroom is in full effect here's the images here so slash is like trying to uh, communicate with Selium under the door and then we get this phenomenal image of Selium can somehow like snaking the door lock which has fallen off or there's clearly some issue here Selium got stuck inside and I imagine they got him out I imagine the rescue operation is not still underway even actually Selly replied with this one with the door just coming off so I don't exactly know what the solution to this was but um yeah thought an absolutely fantastic tweet to be honest there's also this some Crim6 thought was pretty cool so if you guys don't know what he's doing in the like the R1 or Rinsport is it called simulator type stuff he's um you know look he's not quite at the level of the pro players I don't believe he quite qualified to compete in the playoffs let's say he got a few points over the season though so he's vlogging the trip and he's going to be there as a part of the broadcast so doing post race in interviews as well which sounds very entertaining if you guys know anything about Crim6 and look how sick the venue is here actually okay you've got some cars it's pretty nice but also like um you know with all the setups and stuff I know that he did this a while ago I think it was in Katowice but I think the playoffs are here in Munich and Crim is out there for three weeks so I'll definitely be tuning into some of that the world championship though is coming up relatively soon Scrappy knows that it's only a matter of time they will need to improve a fair bit Toronto yes all the teams they lost to I mean like, in the end they lost to FaZe and they lost to New York Subliners the two events grand finalists of the tournament but in fairness that was the same story with poor Vegas right they played face and subliners round uh, you know one and round two of losers and they also bowed out of the tournament relatively early on there was also this from Illy who says at Arsenties we are everything now I do want to just stay tuned on this storyline going into next year because there were rumours going around even this season and definitely last off season that maybe Illy if he was to go from Optic to Los Angeles Grillers was a likely possibility just because we know that that duo could work in theory. We know they get on well. Arsties and Illy, and you know, Arsties is the main, Illy is the flex. Does it have the most slaying power in the world? Probably not. Does it have some winning potential? Most definitely, yes. So I think that's the question to be raised here. What happens with LAG? We don't know. Is Arsties still going to be there? Are they going to build around him? Are they going to build around Joe DeSeeves? Is this going to potentially happen in another team? But just stay tuned because definitely in COD history, in times past, there's been team of twos that will come along will be like all right I want to play with this guy and they'll go and like shop themselves around to different teams say look bring you bring me an RTs in and we're going to revolutionize your team whether orgs want to do that I don't know whether this is even a thing I also don't know what we do know though is Los Angeles Gullers are in a difficult spot Ariane who I you know, met a couple of times at the events this year has unfortunately been effectively cut from the Gorillas due to budget try to you know he was an analyst for this team and he talks about how you know his experience on the roster and everything like that so really difficult and I don't know where the Gorillas are going to go the pure Paris Legion route next year. They're going to say, you know what? We can't sell the spots yet. Maybe there's some issues with getting that all finalized because the rumors are kind of saying that LA Grillas is still going to exist for another year. So obviously a difficult time. What the roster even is, are they even going to bother doing anything? Because like for budget reasons, they're going to get rid of their analysts. They probably only will sign a coach if they absolutely have to, right? I don't know what Marky V is going to do going forward. So yeah, who knows? Hopefully another all comes in and actually buys out Grillas and we don't have to worry about this but it could be another year of just suffering through the season of uh, Los Angeles Gullers just getting smoked as we have seen with the Paris Legion in the past but hopefully at least um, you know Vegas could be again competitive next season with any luck. Before we discuss the print thing just wanted to mention here from Draza so he actually responded to the crowd situation and look Draza and the villain have kind of it's been a big talking point of the last few days he got frustrated with the flank tweeting out about oh, the FU Draza chance did he just get frustrated because he's got Girlfriend got frustrated and then he was kind of defending it and then everything kind of went downhill as a result. People were saying that he's soft because I don't think Draza is particularly soft to be honest. I mean if you listen to this clip here he's like look I thought it was pretty funny what the crowd was saying but 
It's just the reaction on Twitter and the reaction to the flank. And basically what he's saying here is like, I don't mind the crowd. What I got frustrated about was the flank's tweet. So I kind of get it. But at the same time, I do think like he's, you know, less soft and more of a better villain than he is sometimes made out to be by certain people on social media. Saying the crowd got wild. Listen, bro, I, I had no problem with the crowd chat. There was zero problem with the crowd. I had, I had no... No thoughts to the crowd. I just lost my tournament 3 0 off the stage. They're just saying he draws it, and I just flip them off back. But to me, that's fair. To me, that's that's all it was to me. I don't know if I said it wrong on Twitter or if how Twitter took it, but I I never cared about the the fans. The fans saying he draws means nothing to me, bro. Like I don't give. A about that i actually like to get booed and shit like that like that shit like wakes me up but we know how it goes the cod community is going to take no prisoners and come the world championship it's going to be really interesting to see what happens there with draza he i'm sure is taking notes once again his revenge on toronto on whoever he lost to at the event I and mean, they got thrown by toronto right so that's going to be their plan i'm sure kenny is looking to get revenge and probably is going to take his anger out on optic because that's seemingly what he always does at these type of tournaments but let's dive into that optic situation so the phenomenal podcast comes out with the stocksman who has been doing these great interviews over the last couple of days did one with attach i believe there's some other great guests coming up as well but this one was with pred so much detail on here from where we started out with like um you know of course he's bosnian by heritage to australia coming to the us to play for optic nearly right i mean obviously it was seattle surge nearly joining optic and he discusses that possibility in quite some detail right because he also confirms as we've known for some time that at the start i think it was the modern warfare 19 season there was a reasonable chart of pred and hydra on at the paris legion they could have had, I think it would have been Zed and Denz and all this with AG and uh, Paco on the team. And I mean, that would have been absolutely absurd. But this is kind of a known thing at this point that that was a potential roster with those two. Plus, um, I think maybe it was going to Carl War. Was it possibly with Zed, Denz, Pred, Hydra? It was meant to be a potential team of four. Paris said, nah, I'm not so sure about these guys. They'd prefer to go down the veteran talent route, which didn't necessarily work out particularly well. So things could have been very different in COD history. But in the end, of course, Pred went to Surge, Hydra went to New York subliners they have a good little rivalry between the two of them but Pred also makes quite clear that the optic move was very close we know that for a fact right we know that it was nearly happening didn't quite happen in the end but also discusses what could happen from now going forwards because he says quite clearly that optic is still the team that everyone wants to join and implying therefore that he that's also his top priority to try and join optic in the offseason if possible and look you'd think phase you'd think thieves would be two and three after that maybe there's some other possibilities but certainly I think Pred will join one of those three teams and it seems quite clear with the way he talks about Hex and the Seattle Surge situation and Optic as an organization and also about his uh, dream team that Optic is the way he wants to go. You know, what, what was it like the first time when it, when it kind of the actual possibility was really there as a trade and then fast forward to, you know, hearing in the crowds, what's that experience like? I mean, obviously it's a, it's a, it's a really weird experience. Obviously, like me thinking I'm, I'm about to join them. Um, obviously, that's the org that every, every player would love to play on. Yeah. Um, so obviously for me, I was obviously like, you know, very, um, it was a very strange situation because like I said, it was mid-season. Um, there was just so many things going on. Um, so it was very strange, obviously, like me thinking I'm about to join them, getting prepared to join them, and then not, and then going to that tournament and hearing that. I mean, for me... After after I was I knew I wasn't gonna be joining them that season, I just had to like close all that stuff off. Like just put close that door for now. You know what I'm saying? Like just close that door for now and just worry about what's in front of me, which is my team and how I can best provide my team the best situations I can. Did that situation bug you at all though? Honestly honestly, the only reason it did bug me was just because of how long it took. I feel yeah. like my it it jeopardized a lot of my team's practice and my practice and it also when you don't know what's going on for that long, you like you just you just sitting there waiting every day. You know what I mean? Like yeah, it's an uncertainty that's just uncertainty there. of like everyone's trying to move on and prepare for what they have to prepare for, but like we aren't given uh, able to move on and prepare because no one knows. You know? What yeah, mean? you might not be there next week. Yeah, like my teammates are like, are we gonna be playing for him or not? Or you know what I'm saying? So everyone's just trying to understand and move on, which that was the only annoying part. But um, for me, like looking at my guy, like, if I don't, if you know if things don't work out it is what it is but i'm still like my team was very supportive of everything and i knew that i'd be coming back to a team that's still ready to play still ready to win so for me i was in a really like luckily just because of all the, the friendships we have it was smooth sales when it came to that you know what i'm saying the only thing that hurt us was just simply the under practice you know what I'm yeah saying? yeah that's what really hurt us but um that was the main thing that bugged me just not being able to find out quicker than i think we should have it just got dragged on a lot longer than it should have okay relationship though like let's say you know 
Hex and all this is all good though. Oh yeah, yeah, for sure. You did the podcast too, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah it was all good, smooth, and everything. Oh yeah, for sure. Yeah. Everything, everything was um, everything was smooth. Everything smooth when it comes to that. Just business, you know. Yeah. Pick a team of three, all time. Three with you. Oh, three all time with me. I'll yeah. Get, um, me, me, scum, uh, me, scum, uh, karma, and form. So it seems to me plenty of clues there that Pred to Optic having almost happened a few months ago is definitely on his mind to occur again. This does seem to make the most sense. And also from an Optic perspective, I think it makes the most sense as well. Hook individually has not been quite so good the last couple of events. I honestly think that if they perform badly at the World Championship again, there are questions about Ghosty. I remember actually when, I think when that team was formed right, Hex made it quite clear in, I think it was a process episode, he was like, look, Dashi and Shotzi are my long-term guys. The other guys on the team are not guaranteed to be so much, right? They're kind of shorter-term fixes and options that might turn into longer-term prospects. Hook was great at times at the start, but the last two LAN events he's been to, he's not been impressive. Ghosty, I think, has been very important for this team, but also had a tough time at Major 5. So I personally would keep Ghosty around next year. I think he works well for the team. I don't know if there's any other better options out there that can do what Ghosty does and actually work with Dashi as an AR. That's the issue, right? You've got to find someone that can work well with Dashi and get the best out of Dashi, but also lead the team because Dashi isn't really going to do that. So I think a player like Ghosty is hard to find and probably should be kept around. Whereas Hook, I do believe you can upgrade from him, to be honest, right? If you, you know, gave me the choice between Pred and Hook, I would take Pred without thinking about it too much. More consistent, I think a higher skill ceiling as it stands, at least at the moment. Hook back in the day was unbelievable, but at the moment it just, you know, isn't always working out. Hook is a bit too up and down for my liking, personally, if I was the general manager let's say of this team so I'm sure that Pred realizes there's an option there but of course it massively depends on what happens at champs there's even maybe a part of Pred that wants to you know if he could beat FaZe round one and if he could try and make a run at the tournament then he would improve his chances to make it onto one of those teams next season because it, let's say he was to beat FaZe round one and then FaZe were to drop out top four top three then maybe they're going to make a change maybe they even think about making a serious change and Pred could come in so to me it's like Pred will go to one of Optic Thieves or FaZe I know that some things Thieves fans don't expect changes. I am like, unless they win champs, I'm 95% confident they'll make a change, Los Angeles Thieves. And that's not necessarily because they may or may not want to make a change. It's because they're all free agents. There's guys like Pred and Sib on the market. And, um, you know, they're going to get poached potentially. And there's the potential thing of like Thieves dropping their salaries. Players might go elsewhere. Like um, I'm expecting changes for that team. Let's say Envoy was to leave to go. Maybe even Envoy goes to opting again. Who knows? Maybe Pred goes to Thieves. I don't know what's going to happen, but I think it's quite clear from his statements there that Optic is still the top candidate for Pred. Now, if they win champs with Hook, maybe it's a very different story, but I still feel like even if they do win champs with Hook, they know that they've got a performance in their locker like what they had at Major 5, which makes you a little bit concerned. But I also thought the other part was funny where he mentions his kind of dream team and he puts in Skump, Karma and Formal. Doesn't mention Crimson, which is kind of interesting because maybe in my ideal world I'd have Crim and Scump and Formal plus Pred, but you know, it's nice to see Karma get his respect in there, right? As what he did for that franchise. But and look, honestly, if you're building an all time CDL dream team, it's not a massive surprise to choose these players. These are the top players with the multiple, with the most Call of Duty titles, with multiple victories within them. Scump and Crim have the most different COD titles at six, where they've won two or more events. Karma, Formal, Clay, all at five. Of current players, Octane, Kenny, Simabizi, Sasha, and also, well, uh, pre and also Slash, I believe, also at three. So, um, you know, these are quite clearly to me the top five players of all time. And if you're going to choose a dream team, of course, you're going to pick some of these players. And they've all played for Optic at some point or another. That's how it tends to go. So I guess realistically, it's not like he could have said, oh, you know what, Optane, Kenny, and Nabel. That's my dream team, right? If he had have said that, I think he'd have made it quite clear again what his intentions were. And in fairness, if you're going to pick a dream team, you're going to have to pick some Optic players. So maybe there's not too much to read into there. But very much in Twitter, your thoughts in the comment section below. Just one final thing to close out with here, the cards for the Boston Reach. This is still remarkable to me that over the entirety of Major 5, they lost zero controls. Seven control wins, zero control losses, five and eight in R point, two and six in search. The game mode that, okay, some brain is required, but fundamentally it's get more kills than the opponents. And they are fantastic at doing just that. And that's what they do. I mean, look at the numbers here for Beads and Awakening in the respawns. I mean, the control 
control at 1.43 for, for beans and 1.33 for weight. Very impressive stuff. But um, yeah, the hard point is not working out so well. And honestly, for all the talk about Vivid and everything like that, by the numbers, Vivid got fried. Let's be honest, right? I know Vivid kind of gets a little bit of protection because of the type of role he plays and stuff, but it wasn't pretty this time, you got to say. But very much interested your thoughts in the comments below. Hit the like button if you enjoyed. Subscribe if you're new. Take care, and I'll see you next time.